All right, y'all, welcome back to the podcast. It's the second episode, and today we're taking it outside. I got a special guest here, Nazir Marston. We're gonna be playing a singles match to about either seven or 11, and basically throughout the volleys, he's gonna be asking me questions. All right, low skill for serve. Hey, hey, it gotta be a kill. <laughs> okay. Still hiding his, right? Hey. Before we jump into it, man, first question I want to ask you is where did it all start for you? How did you get into handball? So where did it start for me? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel, man. Today, we got an interview with Nazir Marston, arguably one of the fastest growing, uh, fastest improved handball players in recent times. Today, we're going to play a little handball with him and try to learn what made him successful in his journey to the top so let's jump into it super excited to share this information with you guys let's go so where did it start for me the first part that i really fell in love with handball was wingate wingate in the morning st john's in the night how old were you i was 16. Came a long way since then right yeah From your transition to B player to A player, what do you think is that key thing that kind of took you to the next level? So when I first started, like, I used to train a lot with Taiwan, and I used to play against a lot of the top players. And when I was a B player, they told me to become an A, I have to shoot more. Like, my whole game was a lot of, it was still strategy. It was like a lot of lobs, a lot of drives, mm -hmm. and a lot of placement. Yeah. But to become an A, that's not going to work against the A players. You have to at least be able to put the ball down and keep it down. Keep it so down. I feel like that was a big transition because if you see my games now, now I actually kill the ball left corner, right corner in front of me, okay. and it plays a big part. I could have swore he was going right side. Yep. <laughs> so the reason I just went back to the left corner is because Amir put himself here and put it here. So this whole side is gone, but a lot of people like to anticipate to run that way. So if Pretty I go good. back this way, they're already stepping. Okay. So there's no way they can go back. Right. That's why I did that. Nice, right on the line. I thought it was going left. You competed in the Opens this weekend. Yes. How did that go? So we lost in top eight to David Velez and Pito, 21-20. 21-20, close yeah. game. That was anybody's game. It was definitely anybody's game, yeah. Okay. I feel like for that game, I don't feel like nobody was playing bad. Everybody was playing good. Yeah. And it was a matter of, for that specific game, it was a matter of who could get up and get to 21 first. And, and how did how did killing the ball and keeping it keeping it down play into that for you? So for that game, it was a little hard because of the amount of power that David was hitting with his shots. Okay. Like my whole goal when I'm on the court, on the the right side of the court, my whole goal is to get in front and use my position. But if somebody's hitting it really hard, y'all all know David Velez hit it very hard at you, it's sure. hard to put it lower. Like, even if it's not a kill, at least it's a position shot where the person on my side will have to come around me and try to do something else with the ball. But for that game, it was pretty hard because of David. How did killing the ball get you that far in the tournament? How many games did you, did you um, win? So right before that, it was a two-day event. So for the mm -hmm. first day, killing the ball helped me in the Josh and, and his father's game, Josh yeah. and Colleen. It helped us in that game because going into that game, me and Taiwan felt like we was doing extra. Okay. Like we was doing a lot of main things that we didn't have to do in that game. We, and then once we spoke to each other around like, probably like 11, eight or something like that, we came back to the court and we just started doing very basic shots. Like they returned it, we just put it in front of us. Okay. And that's how we was getting all of our points. The round before that, we played Santana. 
Santana. I see how Santana plays. He tries to power the weak side player until he gets his shot. So I said, I'm going to just keep my hands up, try to place it in front of me, and if he gets too far, like say I'm right here, he's here hitting it hard, hitting it hard, and then he comes here. This is too far to cover this whole side. Right, so, so once you try to jam it again, once I throw that ball over there, you got to literally run all the way over. And then if you do get it, now Taiwan's running in. And he's going to do yeah, whatever with the He got a lot of shots that he can go for. We're learning a lot so far. My goal, guys, is to let you guys in on, you know, the mind of a top player, you know, some of the challenges they face and, and how they overcome those. Now let's talk about the importance of lobs for you. How important is... Okay, so if y'all go lob. back to what he just did, he just, he stood on the right side and served it up the line. I thought he was coming to the left. So I'm standing here already. I cheated over because I thought the angle was coming this way. When I seen the way his body moved and the ball went this way, as I'm running, for my game style, my lobs go like this. And then I raise it up. So mind you, if I'm running this way, I could easily. That's in the same motion. Up. Yeah, in the same motion. Okay. So once I lob it up, I feel like it pushes them back and I can start running it for whatever shot he go for. Because I think right after that, you went that way and I killed it. Just killed it, right. Giving us a good run, y'all. Good hands, good kills, lobs. <sighs> Hold it. Be <laughs> toddies. I think he's getting nervous. Guys, I was not nervous. My shoes were actually untied, and I wanted more stability in my feet to give me the best chance of winning a volley. So far, my key takeaways are the importance of killing the ball, lobbing the ball, and gaining control of the front of the court so that you can kind of control what happens next in the volley. If you made it this far, drop a like on the video and let's get back into it. How important is it to pick on your opponent's opposite hand? It depends on the person. Because some people say that one of the signs of the players nowadays is that their opposite is better than their strong hand. I feel like playing against certain people, you develop the need to have to use your opposite. Mm -hmm. Like right now, if you keep playing me every day for this whole year, your opposite is going to get better because I'm going to go to that mm. automatically. When I played in a lot of these open singles, I would serve to a lot of the A players um, strong hand mm. because playing against other players, they serve to their left hand and it develops a better return. Mm, interesting. Right. What's the best way you'd say to develop your opposite hand? I, well, the way my opposite got so strong is because coming into the sport, my right was messed up. I would just come to St. John's in the night and I would just stand here and return it. I go like this. Okay. Oh. See how close it was? Yeah. Because I'm so used to it at that point. So going into tournaments and stuff, when they serve it to my left, that's yeah, usually yeah. my return. Can we see that return one more time? Okay. Left hand. Right, okay. So you, you really get under the ball. Yeah. It's... And I could do it from like a lot of different places on the court. Okay. You need to develop a left hand or whatever your opposite hand is, because there are still strong hitters in the Bs. Josh, Tristan, Rob, say somebody sends you that way. If you don't have an opposite, how are you going to return it? Returning it not only meaning just putting it on the wall, you have to do something with the ball. Mm -hmm. You could get it and then just hit it to the wall, but what are they going to do next? Right. You got to be able to develop, okay, if they hit it this way to my left hand, what am I going to do next? 
Mm. Like if somebody sent me off, a lot of the times you see me driving it real hard, cross corner to the person here. So it comes at them like this. Or I would run off the court and return it high. Like a lob. So if I lob it, if I lob him, lob it, I could run in the court. So now I gain position, I'm in the front, he's in the back. If that makes sense. Definitely. I'm learning a lot. Point game. Nice shot. Thank you. Good shot, great game. <laughs> it's one piece of advice you would give to, first of all, that was a tough game, man. I think you were getting me a lot with the drives up the left. I didn't expect that from your left yeah. hand. Um, a lot of low shots, like you were saying, kills, kill shots. And that all takes time. Like, mm. perfecting angles and perfecting when to go for certain shots, that all takes time. Sure. When I first started, it's literally, I was really not good at all. Okay. Like, it was just swinging and my arms like this. That's how bad it was. Yeah. But training, um, dedicating yourself, um, playing a lot, watching your videos. Yeah. Watching your video plays a big part. You want to see all the errors. Right. You want to see the... 19 up, what you do next? Mm. You want to see what your opponent goes for because nine out of 10 times, if you're on the same division, you're going to see them again. Right. You want to see what they do at 19 up. Oh, are they folding? Like, are they cracking? Are they still confident to go for their shots? If they're confident, then you got to be more confident. How important is being confident on the court? Yeah, being confident is, is really important. Like I said, the close games. A lot of people fall under pressure, and you don't want to be that type of person. You don't want to get nervous. You want to hold your partner down, or even in singles, you want to hold yourself down. Take your, take time. I usually uh, take a wipe or a timeout, and I tell myself, okay, zero, zero. Oh, I like that. Zero, zero. It's like you're starting a new game. For sure. Why are you nervous to go for it now when you, you're not nervous to go for it at zero, zero? So I like to tell myself that, too. Love that. How long did it take you to start playing to become a top so I've been playing player. since 16. Right now I'm 22. So that's six years. About six years. Yeah. And what's one piece of advice you would give to a new player, brand new, looking to get into handball and, and level up? I feel like starting, um, whatever game you play, record your first game or record your first couple games, whatever. See your game style and then search up on YouTube all these different type of A's and see who, who you feel like you're similar to. Because from that, it wouldn't really be hard to like imitate certain shots and it'll help you in the long run. Okay. To be honest, yeah. Who was your role model coming up in handball? Well, Taiwan. Taiwan, <laughs> for sure. I said, since I started, I've just been watching his games, watching him play Timbo, watching him play Tavo, watching him in doubles with all of them. and. Now we're playing together. <laughs> right. Some people say you've kind of taken what he's done and kind of put your own spin on it. Um, how important is it to borrow shots from stronger players? I feel like it's important because if you watch strong games and you see certain shots they go for and it works 9 out of 10 of the time, if you can imitate that shot, then why not? You might as well. And then you also got your own game that you have. So you might as well add that game to your game and then put it together. For sure. Anybody needs any questions, like, because I started in the juniors, they look up to me. So whenever nice. they ask me questions or they want to meet up to practice, I always do it. OK. All right, y'all, we heading out of the park now. Real quick, Nas, where can people find you again? So my Instagram is nasty underscore Nas with five Zs. My YouTube is nasty with three Ys and Nas with three Zs. So y'all, go follow him, man. Real resource in the handball community, and we appreciate you a lot. Thank you. All right, guys, that was the interview with Nas. Yo, I really want to bring y'all value and help you guys elevate and grow and be the best version of yourselves, man. Click right here to see our playlist of other interviews, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Look, tournaments, opens, step on the court, focus. Said I got a plan, but I don't show it. And my confidence is steady growing. Underhand, polling, move the ball, I control it. Crowd get excited when I, uh, crowd get excited when I roll it.